Show gratefulness where the call is to Allah. Where the call is to Allah. <laughs> Oh. 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Brothers, I'm very glad to be here tonight. I want to thank Sheikh Mohammed Al Bey and the organization here at the Peace Academy for giving me this opportunity to meet with my brothers from different masjids and different parts of Southern California. I am very honored to be here today. And I uh, would like to thank each one of you for being here tonight. I want to have a special thank for my brother, Bassam Ramush. He lives in San Bernardino, and he came tonight especially for me and my brothers who came from Palmdale just to uh, hear what we have to say and, and support our uh, cause in the educating the Muslim community to be united together, inshallah, for one uh, cause. Uh, <laughs> If I want to tell you the story about our organizations, it is multiple organization, it will take me more than probably days to, to say that. I'm going to try to be very brief because I only have about 45 minutes to talk. But I want to share with you what we have. We have a, a very unique situation in Antelope Valley. We have built a mosque, we have built a school, we have built a cemetery with a very small community. And this is all due to uh, help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sincere intention for the group that we had been working together. I moved to Palmdale in 1989. You know, I was uh, looking for the opportunity like everybody else, uh, trying to raise my family and buy a house and live in a community that can be affordable. And I met a man, I will never forget that man. He rests in peace. Uh, he passed away in 2004. His name is Dr. Jabir Muhammad. Some of you may know him. In 1993, we met in a, in a farm in a day of Eid al-Adha. We were looking to sacrifice some lambs at that time to do the sunnah. And he met with me and we said, he asked me, where do I pray? And I told him, you know, I am praying in this uh, mosque and uh, I stopped because we didn't have, you know, uh, uh, we had some kind of a little bit of problem. So I said, he said, why don't you come pray with us? And he just happened that to find a house, a small house in, in, in Lancaster area. And that house is like in the middle of nowhere. And he said, let's make this house a, a mosque. I said, okay, let's do that. We rented the house for $600, and we started working on building a real mosque. In, in about less than a, a year and a half, we were able to save it $12,000. At that time, that was a fortune for us. We have $12,000. I said, you know, now we have a lot of money. <laughs> $12,000 in 1993 is a lot of money for a mosque that had $600, a budget of $600 to $1,000 a month. I said, you know what, And I, I am a real estate broker by uh, profession. That was my main job. I found a place in Palmdale Boulevard for, for foreclosure. It was a foreclosure property. And the owner, who happened to be a Jewish lady, took it back from the original buyer. I said, what do you think about building a mosque in Palmdale? And he was always very enthusiastic to everything I come up with because he knows our intentions are very sincere and very uh, real. I said, 
this by this building. But he said, uh, we don't have money. I said, don't worry about the money. Money will come. We had $12,000. We want to buy a building for 200000 I negotiated with the lady, the owner. We want to build this, we want to buy this building from you, but we need to pay down $40,000. $40, this is all we have. We don't even have $40,000. We had $12,000, but we told her, we only have $40,000. I want to give you my commission the, that I, I earn, and the rest of the money will pay it in escrow when we close. And I was able to negotiate with her for zero interest because we're buying a mosque with her financing. I bought the, the building for zero interest for four years loan. And we were able to close the deal and raise some money. We bought the building and we still had $12,000 that we originally started with. I said, okay, now we bought the building. What are we gonna do with it? We need to start, it's an old building. It's an old auto dealer that was down, run down, we need to, to remodel it. I said, we need to start raising some money. So I made the first uh, telethon on uh, Channel 18 at that time, if you remember, Channel 18 used to be international channel. They had an Islamic program, they had an Arabic program. I said, let's have a program. We, we raised uh, that telethon. It was broadcasting to all over the United States. We raised $65,000. From that point, everybody start looking at us yeah, this is a credible organization, and the donations start coming. Only Allah knows from where. Different story, different places, different uh, people with, with different intention. But when we built, when we started that mosque, we, me and him, you know, and I, I'm, not, I'm saying me and him, I'm not disc discounting the efforts of other people, but we were the main forces moving everything forward. A lot of people help us, and we thank him for that. But it was the head or the brain that was working to make that happen. I said, let's put some guidelines for our organization. One of the guidelines, I said, we need to build an organization that is going to have educational a program for Muslim and non-Muslim. I said, that's a great idea. I said, we need to have a pro, a, an organization that is always gonna be a Muslim, organization without compromising our identity, which means we're not going to try to to do anything that is against our sunnah or against our tradition. Like, for example, when we bought the building, I said, we will not pay any interest it's against our religion. The lady respected that. She said, okay, I understand that. And she was able to agree with us that uh, we need uh, to make the deal work. So this is the first thing we did not compromise. And since that day, we have never compromised on anything in our tradition. Even when we are uh, doing in any function, when we are uh, doing a lot of, uh, we do activities in the colleges, we always start with Quran because that's our religion, that's our uh, tradition. We never started like to, to show off in, in public in any Islamic organization, in any Islamic function. We never start with uh, something that is not according to the Sunnah or according to Quran. And our goal was we have to follow Islamic Sunnah and we have to follow the tradition of the Prophet Sallallahu and follow the Quran. And if we disagree on anything, me and him, we made a, a, an agreement in blood almost. Said we never, we should not be disagreeing. And if we disagree on anything, we dispute on anything, let's go to the Sunnah and the Quran. And that's why it kept our bond together. And we were able to establish the mosque and build the mosque that cost $600,000 in a very short period of time. With the grace of Allah, we were able to achieve that. The other guidelines we put, I said, we want to build a mosque, we want to build a cemetery, and we want to build a school. I said, okay, we build the mosque right now, what are we going to do? I said, let's build the cemetery. You know, because at that time we had some brothers in our area, they died, they didn't have anybody to help them to be buried, it cost too much money. I said, let's start building the cemetery. We found the land, again, we bought it with zero interest, 20 acres, we went through the hearing like our brothers in Temecula. They had a big resistance. We had the same resistance, but in a smaller scale because the area 
uh, that uh, in, in where the cemetery is is not occupied. It's all landowners. They are not there, but they own the land. They were making all kind of allegation, accusation to a Muslim. All oh, Muslims they bury in masses. The Muslim they bury in their standing. The Muslim they don't bury with the casket. The blood is going to contaminate the water. The this and that. They had so many stories. But because we were aware of all of the laws, the Constitution protects us. The Constitution allows Muslims to build their cemetery and bury their dead ones, loved ones, without a casket. Did anybody know that before? Everybody thinks, no, it is the law. There is no such a law require anybody to be buried in casket. It's the law of that cemetery so they can make money but it's not according to the California law or the, state, uh, the federal law. So we were able, with, with the help of Allah, able to overcome all of the obstacles from the neighbors, and we got the approval. Even one of the commissioners on that panel that who approved our cemetery, he said, I would love to turn you down. And I know I, I can turn you down, but I know it is uh, something that against the zoning, you are, you are compliance with the zone, you are in compliance with the zone. Legally I cannot, but I would love to say no. But he couldn't say no. And they asked us one question about identity. I said, if I am dead, can I be buried in your cemetery? I said, no. You have to be a Muslim to be buried. So we did not compromise and say, yeah, because we want to get the approval, let's say yes to him. And we never said that. We always tell the truth because that's the only thing we can uh, survive with. The truth always helps because you don't have to remember what you said before. So we set the guidelines, we build the cemetery, and again, we never had, uh, uh, you know, donations were coming from only Allah knows from everywhere, some people sending donation without even uh, inviting them, some of them from overseas, some of them from locally. But because of our sincerity, our intention was so sincere to help the poor and the needy, Allah made it happen to us. Allah made it easy for us. One of the other condition we made to ourselves, a promise, I said, we want to build an organization, an institution, an institution that is going to survive after you die or I die. Because we don't want to build a mosque and leave it and close it after a year or two or a ten years. Because right now the, the government can take your property, even if it's paid for. They can take it by the taxes. If you don't pay the taxes, they can take it. So I, we said we want to build an organization that is self-sufficient, that is supporting itself. So we decided that, you know, basically the cemetery is going to be one of the sources to survive our organization for the future. At the same time, we can help the poor and the needy. And we have over 30 to 35 percent of the people in that cemetery are buried for a free or a reduced cost. So we achieved the second goal that we had, and that was in 1999. And we said, okay, we need to build the school. At the time, we had an Islamic school, a Sunday school. It wasn't sufficient for, for us. You know, the parents, they want to put their children in a good Islamic school. They want to put them in a small environment. They want to put them in a place where they can feel safe. They want to put them in a place they can feel it is really providing a quality education. I said, that's great. So we had a meeting with our brothers from Lancaster Mosque. I said, let's put our efforts together and build an Islamic school. Unfortunately, after the survey, we calculated how many people we have there that they can afford to pay even, to pay even $300 a month, which is the least cost you can even survive as a school. We could not find more than 20 people, 20 students, uh, between K and eighth grade, which doesn't even allow you to open a school. So I said, okay, what are we going to do? We cannot let our kids down. So we started searching for ideas on how we're going to do this, and we were able to find a concept of charter. I don't know how many of you are, uh, are familiar with charter schools? Okay, two or three people, that's good. Charter school is basically, it's a public school. It's like a school district, a school, 
and it is funded by the government, 100% funded by the government. You can offer the school to anybody who is a Muslim or non-Muslim. When we open, when we petitioned the Palmdale School District to open, to open this school, we were so naive in the education business. We did not know there is uh, no funding for religious organization. If you are teaching religion in any public school, you lose your funding. So we submitted the first charter. We call it American Islamic Charter School. <laughs> we were turned down without any hesitation from the board because it's illegal for you to teach religion at the same get funded. So we learned that we had to regroup and reorganize. We submitted our charter. Basically, we removed the original, the religion part of it. We added the Arabic language as a world language. Because the mosque is located next to the school, the kids are coming from the school, the Muslim kids, of course. Uh, they are coming from the school and then going to the mosque for the Islamic study. And this is the way we were able to find the loop in the, in the law without losing our funding. Of course, you know, when you are a Muslim, this school, just to let you know, was approved after September 11, October 14, 2001. So you can imagine what kind of uh, pressure we had, what kind of situation we were dealing with. And when we submit the petition for the school district, of course you have to have some people speak on your behalf, like our brothers in Temecula did with their petition to the, to the city. I had 19 people spoke in our favor. 15 of them were public officials, elected officials like the mayor of Palmdale and other people from different boards. Even with all of that support that I had, I was able to get a 3 to 2 vote. Can you imagine? 3 to 2 vote. We could have lost it if one of them did not vote. But with, with help of Allah, we were able to get the vote. And then we proved to them that we are a community that says what we do and do what we say. We promise something and we did it. Everything we, we promise them that we deliver. And the school today is celebrating 11th year. This is our 11th year for the, for the charter school. And this is something I like to see in every community. Our communities, you know that especially I, I been in several schools, uh, especially Muslim uh, schools, uh, they are s suffering, uh, fundraising is not happening, a lot of people lost their job, they pulled their kids out, some of them are closing, but this could work for some of this community. And you don't have to compromise on your religion, you still, if you are next to the mosque, you still can take these kids out and teach them the Islamic religion after the school. And also the fact that we are teaching Arabic language. Arabic language is the language of the Quran. If you're teaching your children Arabic, you're basically helping them to learn how to memorize Quran, how to memorize, uh, you know, to study Islamic study. And also, the school being next to the mosque is making a lot of dawah in an indirect way. Because every time somebody accuses the school, oh, they're teaching Islamic religion. So they can revoke our charter because this is what the enemies of Islam will do. And this, they are available every community. The enemies of Islam, they want you to see the Muslim community fail everywhere. And I can tell you that they will make you fail if you don't know what you're doing. And you have to have everything in order and do it by the book. Do not try to cut corners. Build alliances. After September 11, all of us were suffering. All of us were under attack from everywhere. But I can tell you that the city of Palmdale, one of the best cities in the whole Southern California, maybe in California, that supported the Muslims. The city of Palmdale, in the same week, the September 11, made a resolution in the city. They said anyone who is going to harm anybody either from the Middle Eastern or Muslim descent will be punished double what the law is required. I got the first call from the mayor, the second call from the city manager, the third call was the, the captain of the sheriff. All of them, they were very supportive. And you know why? Because they know who we are. Because we are involved in the community. We are not hiding behind something and they're saying, oh, you know what, we're Muslim, we're just going to pray and go home. That is wrong, brothers. 
We need to be very visible. We need to participate every time there is a participation that's something that's civil. We need to speak when there is injustice. And there is a lot of time that we have seen some people, somebody get shot, somebody get uh, oppressed by uh, uh, somebody with authority, and we go speak against it. That doesn't, and, and, you, and when you speak against it, they will come and speak with you when you have something. And this happened with us last, and, and this happened with us last April. Last April, some of you probably wa watch the news in Channel 9, Channel 7, CNN, Daily News, KNX News, Fox News, they all came to Lancaster because the Lancaster mayor and one of his uh, city council women, they were attacking Muslims. They were say, saying Muslims are terrorists. They were saying Muslims are beheading their wives because they're referencing the lady that was beheaded by her husband, Muslim husband, in New York. And they were making all kind of allegation. And then the Lancaster mayor goes on record and say, I wanna build a, uh, I wanna build a, a Christian community, which means he doesn't want to see anybody else except the Christian people in that city. And I was one of the most opponent to him. And I was interviewed by, you can go to uh, LA Times, to all of these news, you will see my comments against him. And he was actually uh, trying to create a, a city ordinance uh, so he can basically promote his agenda for uh, praying in the name of Jesus, uh, praying the uh, Baptist church was promoting that, and they were trying to alienate the minorities. But when all of the minorities got together, they become a majority, and we were able to stop him. And we had him apologize on national TV. And CARE was one of the supporters for, for us in that, and I'm sure some of you probably uh, heard about that in the news. CARE was a major factor in supporting us in that area, and we were able to get the mayor of, of Lancaster to apologize to us and say, I am sorry. But he, did, he wasn't sorry about building a, a Christian community. He was sorry that he, what he said was hurting the people. I did not accept his apology. In public, I went, I said, I did not accept his apology because he was not sincere. Of course, you know, politically correct way you have to accept his apology because he said, oh, he, he apologized. The people do not understand the small technicality, what he means and what he, what he says. So that's why, you know, we as Muslim community everywhere, we need to be visible. We need to communicate. We need to build alliances. We need to vote. I am telling you, I have no respect for anybody who does not vote and complain. If you don't vote, don't complain, because you have no rights. If you are voting, you are changing the system. And you are stopping the uh, ag aggressive policies that they're trying to make against the Muslim. Right now, there is over 17 states everywhere that are trying to make anti-Muslim laws, anti-Sharia laws, anti-anything that has to do with Muslim. They want to prevent us from being able to practice our religion. And if you're not aware of it, Believe me, you're going to be one of those people who are victimized, and you're going to say, why, why? Why did this happen? Why did this happen? Because you did not go and participate and vote. So I urge every single one of you to participate and be vigilant about what's going on in your community. If you don't know what's going on in your community, and you know the city will increase your water rate or electric rate or everything, don't complain about it if you don't stop it. In Palmdale, they call me the watchdog. Every time there is a water or electric or sanitation rate increase, I go and I speak about it. And I speak about it not because of who I am, I speak about it on behalf of the community. And they ask me, how big of your community? I said, my community is big enough. Uh, we have, you know, according to the Census Bureau, they said we represent about 2.67% of the whole population in Palmdale, which is about 10 to, 10 to 12,000. So I tell them, we are 12,000 people. If you don't believe me, go count them. So you have to be available 
and go and support when somebody from your mosque tell you we have something on the agenda in the city or in the school district and they need your help to show up. This country, you are talking about numbers. You are a number. You bring numbers with you, they respect you. If you don't bring nobody, they're gonna vote against you. So when you have an issue, you bring the numbers. Even if you don't say nothing, just bring the people who are behind you. In the second time when we just built the, the cemetery mosque, back in March, we opened it. In the second time, we did not even have one person against us because we came with numbers. And at that time, we didn't even have to speak. All the planning commission said, how many people with you? They counted like 25 people, you know, we drove from Palmdale to Bakersfield. How many opposed? None. It shows you an involvement in the community pays off. It shows you being aligned with people from different ethnicity helps. Because these people that we had, and when we said about the, the mayor of Lancaster, I held a press conference to condemn his action. Can you imagine condemning a mayor of a city, a big city? And he happens to be one of the biggest attorneys in the United States. He had the biggest ever verdict for, for a lawsuit. He had a $378 million verdict. And this guy, we held a press conference in our mosque. And you know who was the speakers? One of them was our mayor of Palmdale. One of them, uh, the president of the Palmdale School District. One of them, the president of the West Side School District. All of these people, they came to our rescue because they know we are good people and they want to help us. And why? Because I stood by their side when the time they needed me. So you cannot just be a taker. You have to be a giver so you can be a taker. Give and take, this is what it takes for a community to be built. You know, we are focusing on our community because of our future generation. We have children that we're trying to raise. There is a lot of laws that they are making right now. They are not in our favor. They're not in our favor of our children. A a tuition in the university is going through the roof. Nobody can even afford tuitions anymore. So if you don't get involved, you don't know what you're doing, believe me, do not complain. And I mean it. I have a lot of people, every time somebody in our community have a problem, they get in trouble with the sheriff, they get in trouble with the city, they get the court enforcement to give them a ticket, they call me. And I, the first question I ask him, did you vote the last time? <laughs> if he tells me no, I will not help him. When I make a, 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 a special event for them, for these public officials, and they don't come to these events, they don't support me, why should I support you? Because you need to be involved. You need to help us to help you. That's the only way you can build a community that is healthy and be able to, to support each other and be uh, dependent and their identity is, is very well known. You, everywhere I go, everybody knows. No pork, no alcohol. It's automatic. Any party we do, I said, you know, even sometimes I have parties for them. They know Kamal's party, they have no, no alcohol and no pork. I said, if you have, anybody wants uh, to drink, you are on your own. Don't make me, and it's automatic because identity for them, our identity become known. And it's an educational for them because it's very important that they know who you are and what you do. Other involvement we have, we as a mosque, we were involved in the first uh, heritage festival. This is a festival that you promote information about Islam. Any events like this, please join it. If you have an organization in your city or in your town or your incorporated area that deals with civil rights, injustice, join it. Because this is an organization like, I am the chairman of the public relation for the Human Relation Commission. This is a, de- this is a commission that deals with injustice. Like somebody uh, call uh, somebody a name because who they are, because he is African American, or because he's Hispanic, or they uh, attack somebody's house because of who they are. They come to us, we deal with them, and we refer them to the proper authorities so they can get their rights. 
So be involved with these civil organizations because that's very important for us as a community to survive and build our community. Muslim American community. We are Muslim first. We were born Muslims and then we become American because that's something we earn. And sometimes a lot of them, they tell me, oh, you will not be, a, you know, some of uh, the people that they are haters, they say, go back to your country. I said, I am an American citizen. I earned my citizenship. I worked for it. You did not work for it. You were just a citizen by default. I am American by hard work. And this is how you need to be. You need to, to be proud of you being a Muslim. I need to be proud of you being American. And this is the message I'd like to relay for you today. I know the program is kind of tied. I don't want to take a lot of your time. Uh, I'll take a question or two of you if you have. And uh, I appreciate your time. And thank you.